Welcome to my next installment in my true crime podcast of Finding My Brother's Killer. Now, at this point, I, uh, I began to question who the bad guys were, whether they were my brother or whether they were the roommates. And so for some reason, I don't know why, I was inclined to solicit via FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, all instances of the police being called to the apartment complex from the day my brother moved in, five years later, until the day he died. And that was a stack, because this is a shitty part of town and a bad uh, apartment complex. So the police had been there hundreds of times. Then I asked via for FOIA the number of times that the police had been called to apartment D-304, my brother's apartment. And I came up with a list of, I don't know, two or three pages. Then I asked for a number of times that they had been called in response to my brother being the bad guy. And there were only like three. And these were the three that had been addressed in court previously. Now, why was this important? I'm going to show you a picture now. Okay. Now, I know you're like, well, what the hell was that a picture of? It looks like some people up on a balcony, blah, blah, blah. It is. I'm going to tell you what it is, and then I'm going to give you a, a zoomed-in interpretation of it, and then we'll come back and discuss it. It is my brother's apartment up on the third floor balcony, and there are multiple units from multiple uh, jurisdictions, if you will. There's the sheriff's department there. It looks like there's the... Uh, police department there. It looks like maybe the DEA is there and it looks like maybe uh, another task force. I can't remember who. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Maybe SWAT or something. There are four different law enforcement groups represented on that balcony serving a warrant or something in my brother's apartment taking the roommates in one direction to the, uh, to the right. The short black guy is uh, Brian Thompson, and the Hispanic girl is Desiree Pacheco. This happened on September 30th of 2021. But here's the weird thing. There's no paperwork for this. Let me show you the, the close-up of this again. Here you go. Okay, so, with such heavy law enforcement representation and no paper trail associated with this, I had a really weird feeling at this moment. So I picked up the phone and I called my mom back in North Carolina. And I said, Mom, is it possible Yali was like working undercover with the cops or some weird shit like that? And my mom knocked my socks off. She said, yeah, sure. I don't see why not. He'd been doing that before back in New Jersey. So we talked for another minute or two about that, and then I hung up the phone. Let me re-emphasize what I just said. When he lived in New Jersey before coming out here to New Mexico, apparently my brother had been working with or for, or something associating with the Essex County uh, Sheriff's Office or DEA branch or something. I don't know. But he had been going with them, either introducing them or taking them on buys or something, but my brother was going along with law enforcement back on the East Coast. Uh 
the picture that I showed you and the fact that there's no paper trail associated with it makes me think that maybe my brother had been involved in similar shit here in New Mexico. Now, the last little thing of interest I will put out there about this before ending this video is that before moving to Albuquerque, my brother lived over there in Las Cruces. And there are websites you can go on to where you can say, hey, am I owed any money by uh, uh, overpaying taxes or uncollected gambling uh, winnings and shit like this, these websites. My brother is owed for reimbursement of expenses associated with working for the city of Las Cruces. My brother did not work for the city of Las Cruces, per se. He may have, I mean, he worked as a cook over there. So, reimbursement for expenses for work done with the city, I have no way of knowing what that means. So, unfortunately, this is a dead end now. I am unable to pursue this investigation about my brother and this kind of uh, work because uh, I don't know where to go with it. But that's not to say that the mystery doesn't continue because in the next video, we're going to be discussing the body cam footage from the police when they went into the apartment and how heavily redacted it is and how uh, in watching it, you'll see it leads to some sort of collusion and or corruption. Pretty interesting deal. Anyway, that'll be next time. If you have any questions, leave them down below. We'll talk to you later. John out.